Good morning. Talk about an absolutely perfect day on the water. There is not a breath of wind. It is flat, calm, really glassy out here. It's really incredible. We haven't seen a day like this in quite some time. It's just Vic and I on the boat today and we just put out the chum and we are trying to catch some ballyhoo today so we can try to go catch some snapper, some mutton, yellowtail, maybe some kingfish, put out some flat lines. We have a full day of fishing ahead so wish us luck and let's see what we can catch. So we are only in 17 feet of water trying to catch bait and typically you'd be able to see the bottom here. It's normally basically crystal clear but it's only a few days after Hurricane Nicole hit Florida and we had like 20 foot waves in this area. So the water is really turned up still. It hasn't really settled yet. So the water is very murky as you can see. You cannot see the bottom even though we're in pretty shallow water but we were fortunate enough where nothing happened in this area. Um, the piers, we got a helicopter coming by. <laughs> piers, however, did not fare really well. Our local Fort Lauderdale pier broke like in the center. So they're gonna have to completely redo the Fort Lauderdale pier. Pompano pier had no damage. It's basically new. Deerfield pier got destroyed. Um, there was some damage to the Sebastian Inlet. So as you went up the coast more, they had more damage. It was mostly like storm surge damage, not so much wind damage, but down here we were pretty lucky. Just have these murky waters, but we got the chum bag in the water. It hasn't really defrosted much yet, but hopefully we'll get some bait back here going so then we can cast net it. Say hi for the video. Just up, guys. <laughs> Did you go diving today? Yeah, we went to, but it's very murky. We tried to catch some lobsters, but we couldn't. Yeah, did it's you, very did you murky. See any? Uh, I, I, I didn't see anything. My brother is like, I know that boat. <laughs> yeah, I saw you guys. I was like, oh, that's the Glover Scalloping video. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Nice to meet you. Thanks for watching. You'll be in the next video if we catch anything. <laughs> see ya. That was nice, huh? A dad with his two boys on this beautiful day. They tried to catch some lobsters, but they said it was really murky. Yep, too murky to find any lobsters today. They gotta wait till this water cleans back up from the hurricane. What's up with our bait, Vic? Oh, uh, uh, let's see. Oh, they're right there. Come on, Are get they? the net. Where? Right there. I don't see them. Right there. Oh. Where do we got? Two valley food. We're having some tough luck out here. This is what we're after. Great snapper baits. You guys find these inshore on the reef right here. We've been having a tough time trying to catch these ballyhoo today. This is our second spot that we have moved to. Seems to be a little better, but we don't have a lot of current. And if you don't have a lot of current, it's not really drawing those fish to the boat. The chum is kind of just like sinking, but it seems like they're finally getting a little closer. So hopefully we'll get some better luck. We currently only have three in the live well. Five, six. Nice. All right, so we got a baker's dozen. We're just getting onesie twosies, and we just finally got six in one cast, which is pretty good. Victor and I said if we had two dozen, we'd be happy, and we'd go out to fish with two dozen. So we're halfway there. Three more. Three more. I think that might be it. Seven? Eight? Good job. See a little patience sometimes. All right, so we basically have two different options today. We either drift or we drop the anchor and fish the same spot. So the first thing we're gonna start with is dropping the anchor. We're in 65 feet now. We'll see where we end up once the anchor um, catches. But we're gonna try anchoring first and if it doesn't work out, then we'll probably move out and drift. So when we mutton fish, we have baits on bottom. We also like to put out a flat line because you never know what can swim through. So I have a wire rig with two treble hooks and we hook them just like this. If a kingfish or mackerel swims by, sailfish can come in shallow. We've caught dolphin, 
while on the anchor too. You never know. Just like that, and we'll send them out there. And that way, just have, we have a, that way we have another line out while we're fishing. All right, first bite of the day. Ah, uh, big fish. Take and drag. So I'd like say yes. Uh oh, you don't have my line, do you? You think you do. Look at this. Yeah. I need to get to the other side of the boat. Yep. Yeah, you do. No, I don't think you're in me, actually. Go ahead. Maybe you got a nice yellow jack or something, Brooke. Okay, well, if I can, whoa! That's sharky. A little bit sharky, but we're gonna still fight it. Mike and I were getting a little, a little discouraged. A little discouraged, and now we're even more discouraged. I'm gonna say that was a shark. Mm, I don't know. I think it was a big mun snapper, and you broke him off. No, we had some decent head shakes, like a shark. And then I'm, I bet we got cut off. Let's see. I was just fishing my ballyhoo on bottom. Not much is going on. There's like no current. And there you go. All frayed up yep. like a nice shark. <laughs> Disappointing. So I think we're gonna pull the anchor again and now we're gonna head offshore a little bit deeper and then drift because we're gonna be drifting inshore. Not really fast because there's not a lot of current and there's not a lot of wind, but We'll see what happens. This crab just swam up to the boat and I netted it with the little bait net. And it's the third one I've seen floating. If you guys know what kind of crab it is, comment down below. See you little guy. Let go, <laughs> let go, I'm letting you free. Let go, he's pinching it. See ya. I'm getting another bite. I had a bite before this and it ran so fast I burned my thumb and almost got a bird's nest and then it cut me off so it was probably like a kingfish that picked up my ballyhoo and just would not stop running. Well, there you go. Definitely had a bite. He took all the good stuff, left me the head. But that's just what we're doing. We're hooking the ballyhoos right there in the nose and we're just drifting, even leaving the rods in the rod holder, not even bothering to hold them, but I'm gonna show you how to hook one. Ready? All right. These guys love to poop everywhere, so when you're hooking them, watch out for that. Just like that through the nose. And then we got like a, probably like a 15 foot leader with eight ounces of lead. Just slowly drop into the bottom. Once I hit bottom, I'll put it in gear and just leave it in the rod holder and wait for the bite. It, all, it uh, hasn't really been working that well yet. We've gotten a few bites, but nothing, nothing in the boat yet today. It's definitely a slow day. But we're still out here trying. Stay on. We need the good fish in the boat. All right. Well, I don't know where, how many baits do you think we have left, Vic? We started with 23. Seven or eight. Probably have seven or eight baits left. So we've gone through over a dozen and have yet to have anything to show for it. And I finally have what I think is going to be a small mutton snapper. <laughs> I wish it was going to be a keeper, but it doesn't feel like it. Oh my I, gosh. My rod was just doubled over, but I think it was the bottom. <laughs> no, you're getting a bite. Oh, getting shoot. A bite. I don't know. No, it's no. gone. Yeah, it's gone. 
Well, we just got into a good area, huh? You have a mutton, bro. Ooh! Come on, baby. Oh my gosh. Why do I catch things that are so, so close? They have to be 18 inches. Do you see that? Yeah. He is literally a, like a hair away from 18. Right? Yes. That is insane. Well, let's get him back in, pop his belly, and let him go. Okay, so we caught him in 100 feet. I just deflated his belly because he was blown up. I'm going to unhook him. He was hooked perfectly. So this is exactly what we're after, just too small. Yeah. Well, Vic probably had this on the whole time while I was fighting my fish. Yellow tail. That's a keeper yellow tail. A keeper yellow tail. You got to decide if you want to keep it or keep let it, it go. No, keep it. Keep it? Yeah. It has already changed color so much, but these have to be 12 inches to keep. It's probably like 15 inches, so he's a keeper. This is what it looks like when a bunch of little fish chew on your bait down there. Vic is on. Big hookup on the bottom. I'm Come not a betting on, man, Vicky. but if I were to bet, I would say something like a mutton snapper. We need something good. We put our time in today, huh? We sure did. Ricky wants to put together a nice video for you guys. And she was so close to getting that keeper mutton. What do you think, like an eighth of an inch off? Literally like an eighth of an inch. Oh, this is your keeper right here. You think? This is going to be your 21 inch mutton right here. Let me move this. I'll grab the sinker, okay? And okay. then you put it in the rod holder. Oh, okay. And then you can leader it. Yep, he just died on us. Just what a mutton would do. Okay, I got the weight. I'm just gonna leave it. Right Is now. it a parrot fish? No, oh, no, it's a mutton. <laughs> I would have thought it was a parrot fish. Yes! He's gonna be a keeper. He's definitely he's... a keeper. Yeah, baby. Woo! Let's go. Let's just measure him just to make sure, but I, he's going to be 19, yep. I can see it. You know, sometimes you come out here, you put your time in, and you just can't catch a fish, but let's see, Vic. He's beautiful, I'm gonna too. I'm going to say 20 inches. He's all lit up. Woo! 19, oh, I got yeah. it! 19 inches. We released his just smaller brother, perfect hook set. Look at this. We spent so much time this morning getting these live ballyhooans for a reason. These mutton snapper love them. Look at that little petite little live ballyhoo, huh? That thing was just dancing along the bottom and we've been putting in our time all day long and finally Mr. Mutton came to play. My grandparents are in town from Orlando tonight and they're coming over for dinner and we were going to cook lobster and scallops for dinner, which we're still planning on, but we were like, we barely have any time left before we needed to pick everything up and head in so that we can cook dinner tonight. So I was like, we need a buzzer beater fish. And there it is. No better buzzer beater than that. I'm getting a bite, I'm getting a bite. Come on, doubled up. I really dropped mine back and let him eat it. Oh yeah. That Hun fast run, like, I don't know. 130 feet, yeah, you're ah! on, you're on. Come on. Please, please. Oh, that's Please. fighting like the right one, too. Oh my too. gosh, can you imagine, Vic? Two buzzer beater muttons? Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> 130 feet of water. Just before we needed to give up, you gotta be kidding me. Come on, baby, stay glued. Stay glued. <sighs> oh my gosh, I can see a jellyfish antenna coming down my line. I don't know. It's probably gonna be a mutton. It's feeling like a mutton. I just don't know if it's going to be legal. But that's okay because we already got one keeper in the boat. It's coming in pretty easy. We'll see. Can you imagine if it's another keeper? <laughs> <laughs> We're just in a good area. We should probably mark the spot. Yeah, we should. It's a mutton. Oh no. Yeah, it is. It is. I see the red tail. No. 
Yeah, he's undersized. He's a 16 incher. Let's just make sure. Normally have, we have a cooler in the back to measure them, but today we got the front cooler. Another one that's gonna be <sighs> this one. <laughs> this one's 17 and um a quarter. Almost 17 and a half. But another one hooked perfectly, so he'll go back nicely. Look at that. Barely hooked. Wow. Hook just fell out. I need to deflate. Vent them. This is a tool to vent fish. All right, vented, as you can see, is not blown up anymore. Got to release. Whoop. Sorry. <laughs> he was ready to go. Guess he vented him good. He's gone. So when you catch fish in deeper water, we're in 130 feet and you bring them up. Sometimes their swim bladder blows up with air and they have a hard time releasing that air and being able to swim back down to the bottom. So this is a little tool that when you stick it in them, the air goes into this little hole here and it comes out the top here. So the second you stick them, you can hear that air coming out here. So you're deflating that air bladder and this little tiny poke isn't gonna do anything to him. He's gonna be able to easily swim back down to the bottom and keep living, having a great fishy life, but. <laughs> <laughs> a great fishy life. <laughs> Yours was hooked good, Vic. Yeah. I'm gonna need the pliers, I think. There you go. This guy's not gonna have a great fishy life. Nope, he's gonna have a we're great, gonna... we're gonna have a great fishy dinner. <laughs> this is what we came out here to do today, to try to catch some mutton snappers. We caught three, two that were just barely too short. Like I said, they have to be 18 inches. This is a beautiful 19 inch fish. And these are absolutely delicious. So I'm really happy. I don't know if I'm gonna cook this for dinner tonight because my dad has already prepped the lobsters and took scallops out of the freezer for dinner tonight. Um, so I don't know if I'll cook this up tonight, but we'll still have a great family dinner and then we'll have another family dinner tomorrow night. <laughs> Woo! Good job, Vic. <laughs> I like taking all credit for your fish, but. Hey, you were part of it. Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. All right guys, so we came home, we cleaned the boat. We didn't clean the fish yet, but tonight for dinner, like I had mentioned on the boat, we're doing lobster and scallops. And a lot of times you guys see us catch, you know, more than what we eat that night for dinner. Like when we went to Steenhatchie and we went scalloping, we ate scallops when we were there, and then we also brought some home and they have been frozen. Or if we go lobstering and we catch more than what we eat for dinner that night, we always bring them home. Fish we normally share with friends or eat it all while it's fresh. We rarely freeze um, fish, but shellfish freezes really, really well. So we always freeze lobster and whenever family comes over or friends, we love doing these big family dinners and cooking for people. So tonight we're going to be cooking lobster that we took out of the freezer as well as scallops from our trip to Steenhatchie. So we got three bags of scallops here. And then there are five lobsters that we took the shell off. And we're making a red pasta sauce, the same one that we did when we were actually scalloping. So if you guys wanna see that, I'll have it linked down below, but we're gonna just sear our scallops and lobster and put it on top of some pasta. So it's gonna be really delicious, but I'm still going to clean up that mutton snapper and the yellowtail and probably cook that either tomorrow or the next day. So that's still gonna happen in this video. I just wanted to share this family dinner with you guys as well because my grandparents don't get to come down here very often, so this is a special big family dinner for us. up our mutton snapper. I'm going to be using this Dextreme six inch flexible fillet knife. So let's get to it.
the other side. And I'm actually going to be cooking this fish on the half shell. I'm not going to skin it. I'm gonna leave the skin and obviously the scales on. Okay, so I'm gonna be cooking these fish on the half shell. So I am leaving the skin on, but I do want to remove the pin bones. So I'm going to cut on both sides of the pin bones and I'm gonna to try to avoid cutting through the skin and then kind of just cut it out of there. I don't really wanna cut the, through the skin, but let's see if we can do that. And then just like that, this is your strip with the pin bones so that we can cook it on the grill fully intact with the skin on. And now this filet is ready for the kitchen. All right guys, so welcome back to our kitchen now. Victor and I just got home from the gym and we're actually gonna cook all this fish up tonight for just him and I. I don't even know if we're gonna have any side dishes. We may whip up some vegetables after we even finish eating the fish because this is kind of a lot for two people. The first thing I'm gonna do is hit it with some branch and vine Meyer lemon infused olive oil. This stuff is delicious. As you can tell, we barely have any left, but I'm just gonna put some of this on to start. We got the grill heating up outside. Gonna go in and give our snapper a little massage. Next, we're gonna hit it with some salt. And then some pepper. I'm excited to try these two fish next to each other. I mean, we've had yellow tail and mutton snapper so many times, but we don't really eat the both of them at the exact same time, so it's gonna be nice to compare them. Then we're going in with some garlic powder. And lastly, Old Bay. So, I really enjoy cooking fish on the half shell like this. It's basically like the, its own little like plate. It keeps all the juices in there. When you skin a fish, you sometimes leave a little bit of meat behind, so this way you're getting to enjoy the whole fish. And I think it adds some flavor when you cook it with the skin. And that's it. These babies are ready for the grill. All right guys, we are outside. We got our brand new grill, which we are very excited about. And we are ready to put these babies on. So here we go. All right. So our fish is ready to be taken off. I had to throw a little sprig of parsley from the garden and a slice of lemon on there to give it a little color because it looked a little dreary, but it's not gonna taste dreary. Come right, on. right, Vic? Dreary is like the last word I would choose for this. This looks amazing. I'm gonna sprinkle some of this lemon juice right on top of my fish. First bite, baby. I think Brooke is hard on herself sometimes if it's too simple, but sometimes simple's the best. Oh, it's good. Oh, that's flaky. Mm-hmm. My first bite was mutton snapper, and this is to die for. We haven't had fish in so long. We haven't been fishing, and this is a good treat. When was the last time we had fish? Probably the last hurricane, when you caught muttons from the last hurricane. Yeah. Mutton, absolutely amazing. Time to try the Yellowtown. Let's see if there's gonna be a difference. much flakier, really fine flakes. 
but good. It's great. I honestly couldn't say I liked one better than the other. I think this is probably my favorite way I've ever had yellowtail next to a whole fried. This is, think, yeah. Whole fried or this might be like the best way we've ever had yellowtail. I think there's something about the fish being attached to the skin and scales that just gives it a different flavor. Man, normally like we're like whatever towards yellowtails, you know, but this, they're good cooked like this. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show you how the fish just flakes off the skin, if you're wondering. Look, it just comes right off. It doesn't stick whatsoever, it peels right off. You see that? So easy, so tender. Well, I had a really fun day fishing with you. We got it done, what we wanted to do, caught our mutton snappers, had a great dinner, nice and healthy dinner, literally just eating straight fish. Straight protein. Straight protein, good thing to have straight from the gym, but absolutely delicious. You have anything to say? Yeah. I um, Me and Brooke, a lot of times we talk about like our favorite trips of all the places we go, and we talk about Alaska, and we talk about this, but this is one of my favorite things to do is just me and Brooke just out there drifting, doing it ourselves. It's what we started doing. It's what you guys saw at the beginning of her channel. And it's just nice to kind of come back full circle. And even a slow day out there is just a lot of fun. Yeah. I like I doing mean, it with you. We probably fished for like four hours without finally actually getting something in the boat. But the buzzer was, beater mutton. It was definitely worth it. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video. Time to finish our fish. <laughs>